Math 31, we're back trying to find some exponential models. So in example 6, I'm given two points, 1, 3, and then 2, comma 4.5, and we want to find the equation of the exponential function that passes through these points. And much like example 5, I'm going to do it by hand first, and then I'm going to flip over to my computer and show you how to do it on your calculator. And where example 5, it might have been a tie between which method was easier, going by hand or going, going on your calculator. I'm going to make the argument that it's going to be easier to do it on my calculator. I'm going to show you these mechanics, and it's a little bit cumbersome, and I'm telling you, once you get used to doing it on your calculator, it's just a lot faster. But let me go through this, just for the exercise of doing some math. So I was given two ordered pairs here, 1, 3, and then 2, 4.5. And I want to just take note that neither of these were the initial value. That's what makes this problem distinctly different than example five. So neither of these points give us the initial value. We were not given our y-intercept. I'm gonna put a little sad face because when you're not given the initial value, it makes doing these problems by hand that much more difficult. All right, so let's do this by hand, and then like I said, I'm flipping over to the computer. All right, so our exponential model always comes of the form f of x equaling a times b to the x. So what I wanna do is I wanna plug both of these ordered pairs into my function. I'm gonna start with the smaller exponent because x is only going to be one here. So from my first equation, if I plug that in, I will get 3 is equal to a times b to the first power. All right, and I'm just going to solve for a as best I can here. And I'm going to say a is equal to 3 over b. All right, so that's me plugging in my first ordered pair. Let's try, I'll put a little separation here. Let's try plugging in our second ordered pair and see what happens. So this time I would get 4.5 is equal to a times b squared, okay? 4.5 is equal to a times b squared. I'm gonna solve this for a again, and I'm gonna get a is equal to 4.5 over b squared. So just to recap, I wasn't given my initial value. It's too bad, right? It's a sad face. It's nicer when we're given an initial value, but instead, I plugged each of my ordered pairs into this equation and I opted to solve for a. You could have tried to solve for b, but the power on b changes, or I should say the exponent on b changes for each of these ordered pairs, and a is always just a, so it was easier for me to solve for a. Okay, so now I have two expressions that are equal to a. a is equal to 3 over b, and a is equal to 4.5 over b squared. So through transitivity, we know that 3 over b has to equal 4.5 over b squared, okay? Now, I have a proportion, so I can go ahead and cross multiply. And when I cross multiply, I'm looking at 3b equaling 4.5 b squared, all right? And I have the beginnings of a quadratic equation, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this, oops, I think I did this backwards, my bad. I just realized this is 3b squared, that should equal 4.5b. All right, I still have the beginnings of a quadratic equation, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and factor this. So I'm gonna move the 4.5b over. This is equal to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the GCF, so I have b times 3b minus 4.5 is equal to zero. I'm gonna use the zero product property, so either b is equal to zero or 3b minus 4.5 is equal to zero. And this is a linear equation, so I will move the 4.5 over. I will divide by three. Let's see what number that's gonna leave us with. 4.5 divided by three. It looks like I have a base of 1.5, or potentially 1.5. All right. So then we have to decide which base are we gonna choose. Well, our base in any exponential function has to be a positive number. And zero is neither positive nor negative, so that's not my base, which means by default, my base must be equal to 1.5. So I'm gonna actually choose my base to be 1.5. And again, that's showing exponential growth. 
because I have a base that's larger than one. And that, that matches up with what's happening, right? I have, I have my Y values growing. And if you can see, I'm just gonna deconstruct this for a, a moment. This base of 1.5 is like saying one plus 0.5, that's 50%. And maybe you can see that you grew from three to 4.5 by a factor of 50%. And here's what I mean. If you take 50% of three and you add it to three, you're up at 4.5. So in bumping from three to four and a half over just one unit of X, that is a 50% growth mark. Okay. All that being said, I know my base is 1.5. The last thing I need is my A value, and then I'll be able to model my function. Now you can plug B into this equation or this equation because A is equal to both of them. I'm gonna opt to do it for the simpler version. So this is telling me A is equal to three over B, which is like saying three over 1.5, which is two, all right? So, oops, I'm shaking my paper around. Let me scooch this up just so we have a little bit more room. So after all is said and done, let me put a little separator here. My exponential model is a times b to the x. So in this case, it's two times 1.5 to the x. All right, and that is pretty convoluted, right? That's a lot of algebra to have to solve that. I'm gonna flip over to my computer show you how to do this on your calculator, and it's a few button pushes, and you'll get the answer a lot faster. So you decide which one you like better. Like, respect if you like doing it this way, that's great. I'm a big stats fan, so I tend to have technology do it for me, but I just want you to see both options. All right, so I will catch you on my computer in just a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, we're back with example six, doing it by a calculator. We just did it by hand. It was a little bit more annoying to do than example five. So let me show you how to do it via your calculator. Same game plan as example five. So here was our last exponential model. I'm gonna go into my lists. I'm gonna overwrite what was in there. This was the wolf population data. Our two ordered pairs were one, three, and two, 4.5. So let me do one and two for my X values. And then we had three and 4.5 for my Y values. Oops, three, enter, there we go, 4.5, enter. All right, I'm gonna go back to my home screen. If you wanna make a scatter plot, you're more than welcome to. I'll just do that at the end. But it's the same program that we did with example five. So we go stat, calc, you need to scroll down to option zero and hit enter because that'll be the one that says exponential regression. But I've said tons of times I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna hit option zero and it's gonna pop up exponential regression for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do L1, comma, L2, comma, and then wait for it. We're gonna go to Y1. All right, and let me hit enter. And there we go, we see our exponential regression. There's my A value of two and my base of 1.5. And I would argue that is much faster than how we did it by hand. All right, so with that, we're gonna head over to example seven, where instead of me just flat out giving you ordered pairs, I'm gonna give you a graph and we're gonna find the ordered pairs from, from that graph. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.